Populations and Resources Unit Lesson 3.4 Final Arguments About the Jelly Increase Activity 2 Evaluating and Analyzing Evidence Scientists revise their claims as their ideas change. So let's review what we know so far. In Chapter 2, we determined that an increase in the zooplankton population could have caused births in the moon jelly population to increase. We also determined that a decrease in the sea turtle population could have caused deaths in the moon jelly population to decrease. Either of these situations could have resulted in more births than deaths in the moon jelly population, which would cause the size of the population to increase. We've also learned that the size of a population can be affected by populations other than its consumer or resource populations. In the previous lesson, we discussed how the algae population the walleye pollock population, and the orca population could have all caused the size of the moon jelly population to increase. But we need more evidence to be sure about what happened in the Glacier Sea ecosystem. As you work to explain why the jelly population is increasing, use evidence you've collected about why populations can change size. Consider evidence you gathered from sim tests and from reading articles. Evidence Criterion Samples that represent as much of the whole as possible provide stronger evidence. You will evaluate evidence about the algae, walleye pollock, and orca populations. Evaluating this evidence will help scientists to decide which claim to support and to explain the jelly increase. Remember that, to learn about a whole population, ecologists often look at samples of the population. Just as we did in Lesson 1.4 and Lesson 2.7, we will read descriptions of samples and decide which ones best represent the whole population. These are the samples that provide stronger evidence. You can find a copy of these evidence cards in the drive folder for the lesson posted to Classroom. Which evidence is the strongest? The samples described on evidence cards F and G were both collected at the same 10 different locations spread throughout the Glacier Sea. Both cards do a good job of representing the whole population. Which evidence is the weakest? Although the algae data was also counted at 10 locations, these locations were not spread out throughout Glacier Sea, so the sample represents less of the whole population. Should any evidence be thrown out? All three evidence cards represent the entire population to some degree, so none of the evidence cards needs to be thrown out. If you compare the evidence cards with the evidence cards from Lesson 2.7, we should conclude that evidence cards E, F, and G represent more of the whole populations than the evidence cards C and D. How does the remaining evidence support or go against these claims? Claim 1. The size of the algae population changed. Claim 2. The size of the walleye population changed. Claim 3. The size of the orca population changed. Claim 1. The size of the algae population changed. Evidence card E supports this claim. It shows that the algae population increased, which would provide more energy storage molecules for the zooplankton, allowing the zooplankton to produce more, resulting in more births. A larger zooplankton population would provide more energy storage molecules to the moon jelly population, which would allow the moon jellies to reproduce more, resulting in more births. Focus on claim 2. The size of the walleye pollock population changed. Evidence card F supports this claim directly. It shows that the walleye pollock population decreased. The walleye pollock and the moon jellies both eat zooplankton. This means that the two populations compete for food. A smaller walleye pollock population would require fewer energy storage molecules, leaving more for the moon jellies. With more energy storage molecules available, the moon jellies could reproduce more, resulting in more births. Focus on claim 3 the size of the orca population changed. Evidence card G is direct evidence against this claim. The orca population stayed stable. This means that the orca population would continue to require the same amount of energy storage molecules, so they would eat the same number of sea turtles, resulting in the same number of deaths. Based on the evidence, claim 3 can be eliminated. Students, revisit evidence cards A through D from Lesson 2.7 along with the new evidence cards E through G to decide on which evidence supports or goes against the claims. End of activity.